Welcome to Sick Biz module number two. This is one of my favorite modules, the selling module. And the reason that we moved it up in the course is because I really want you to get to work and alleviate the pressure of making money, get a little bit of money in the door, and then you can focus on some of the other longer term items that you'll be implementing into your business over many, many years, hopefully. So we're going to talk about selling today. I'm so glad that you're here. Thanks for coming back from Sick Biz module number one. Hopefully you've emailed me the results of your personality test, your entrepreneurship test, and if you've discovered if you're working in a passion business. So I'm excited to read those results. I'm excited to interact with you in that way. In this module, I'm sharing with you what I discovered when I went into business for myself. As I told you in module number one, when I woke up on January 1st, 2015, I had like 300 bucks in my account. So I knew I needed to get going very, very quickly, get some money in the door. Once I could get some money in the door, I could start relaxing a little bit. Like, whew, okay. So I knew that I could meet people where they were coming from. We're gonna talk about that a lot over the course of these modules, that we're meeting people where they are. So if they're coming to me with a pain point, which is one of the closes we're gonna talk about today, I knew that I can answer what they needed. So in the selling module today, we're gonna to talk about two closes that I use regularly. The first one is the trial close. And the second one is solving for the pain close or resolving the pain close if we're giving it a, a shorter title. Both of them are very effective. Now, for these closes to work, it's imperative that you do a little research on your own first. And what I mean by that is understand what the pricing is going to be in terms of the product or service that you're offering that is going to resolve the pain point or is going to act as a solution for your prospect. So before I enter into a conversation with somebody and even let's say I enter into a conversation, maybe it's a Facebook direct mail. Somebody says to me, how much is it to do this particular thing? How much is it to edit a book? How much is it for you to create four blogs a month for me? Okay, on a regular basis. I already know I have to have that answer in my head that makes sense to them. I have to have that answer in my head that is going to satisfy their expectation. So I'm not even gonna try and answer that question unless I know I have a solid answer. I'm not gonna try and answer that question unless I know the pricing to me makes sense. I can defend it, I feel good about it, this is why it's priced this way, these are the number of hours it's going to take to arrive at this result. Those are the pieces of research that I want you to conduct. You should know how much what you're offering is going for in market and also keep up on that because it does change. The more that these businesses pop up here and there, we got to pop up marketing, we got to pop up publishing all over the place, the more that prices are going to change. The more that people flood into the marketplace and the demand for services go up, the more that prices are going to change. So we have to keep our finger on the pulse of what our market is doing, what our industry is doing, what is trending. And we need to do that. We need to be informed before we even answer a question. That's as simple as, hey, how much is it to edit a book? I know very well what is involved in editing a book. I can tick off on my fingers everything that is entailed. So if I'm selling developmental editing or content editing, if I'm selling that as a whole, as a package, I know exactly what's included. That's a $5,000 price tag. I better be bringing the value, man. I know that's two to three rounds of editing, that it's proofing, that it's formatting, that it's uploading, it's bestseller positioning. I know it's acting as a mediator between the author and Kindle Direct Publishing. I know that it doesn't include a custom cover and it doesn't include the cost of transcriptions. It doesn't include the cost of working with the author on an outline. I know those things. 
I have drilled them those down. I am super comfortable talking about them. If somebody comes back and says, wow, that's a lot of money. I can say, okay, well, great. I understand that. And that's why I've structured specific payments to occur at specific milestones as the services are meted out. So I'm very, very familiar with what I'm selling, why I'm selling it, what it includes, how it should be paid, when it should be paid. And the fact that it is in market price and actually it is below market price for many, many publishers. So I'm aware, I'm aware of that fact and I can speak openly and honestly about that fact. That's what I'm talking about. Being confident and talking about your pricing, being confident and talking about the number of hours it's going to take, accommodating for scope creep. So scope creep isn't the name of some like stalker just creeping around you. Scope creep happens when we price a job out and when a client keeps adding on additional hours because they need other services performed and they need other work performed. And so then all of a sudden, my price tag that was this, it's still this, but the work I was going to perform has blown up to this, which means that it's overlapping into other areas of my production schedule. And I'm not getting paid for it because I quoted this price and so unless we're greatly outside the scope, I'm not going to address it with the client. I usually just say, okay, well, you know, we're coming up on a time where if the work continues in this fashion, I'm going to have to renegotiate um, some of these hours that are adding up. Otherwise, a lot of times as business owners, we eat those hours. So we want to be very proactive about that. So that's what I mean. When you're ready to solve a pain point, when you're ready to jump in and say, I'm ready to work for you. I'm ready to get going. Let's just close the deal. You have to have done your research. Estimate the number of hours that the project is going to cost. If you're ping ping and back and forth and really having a good conversation and then all of a sudden they're like, hey, do you know how much this is gonna cost and you don't know? Stop for a minute ask somebody who does know or do some credible research and you don't even have to explain where you're going on Facebook. Hey, people might just think, Oh, she's got a call or he's got a call. I'll just wait. There's nothing that says you have to reply immediately. You get to go about your life. So come prepared to have the conversation and make sure when you have the conversation and you deliver imperative, information that you are fully knowledgeable. I know it's going to take about these many hours, which accounts for what I need to be paid for. I know also that this is in market and here's why it's being priced that way. And you can speak confidently on it. So I just want to make sure that we all do our homework. I have engaged in conversations where I didn't do that. When I was first starting out, I was like, Whoa, I don't know. I don't know how much is it going to be. I'm going to lose this guy. I better say something. And I severely undercut myself. You don't want to do that. You don't want to severely undercut yourself. Take the time that is needed to give the response that is going to both benefit your client and you. Okay. That said, now we can move into how am I going to make money today? Okay. Cause that's why I signed up for this module. Enough with this baloney on scope creep. Let's keep going. I've got bills to pay. I hear you. I hear you 150,000%. Okay. I totally hear you. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is the trial close. The trial close is one of my absolute favorite closes. It's when somebody comes to you and they want to get to work. So they're saying, I understand everything that needs to be done on this project today. So it might be as simple as like, I need this blog done. Okay, great. You need a blog done. Can I answer that? Can I show up and be that person? Yes, I know I can. I can provide that service. Okay, great. So maybe they're not that comfortable with paying you, or maybe they have to uh, gather a few other things before they can get going, but time is not on their side in the trial close. They want to get it done. Uh, they maybe have kind of floated around and tried to do it themselves and said, you know what? The third try on trying to write this book, I can't do it. I need a ghostwriter. Great. The point of the trial close is to start working immediately. 
So we're getting the contract rolling and the payment rolling and the work rolling all at the same time. If somebody's coming to me and saying, I need this, time is not on my side, so can we get going? As long as we are in a similar level, we're on a similar level for what each of us expects to one, pay out and two, be paid, it's kind of like being at the car dealership. You know, if you're only a thousand dollars apart, like each of you can come to the table and say, I can give this, we can make this deal work. I know we can make this deal work. If we're that close and this seems like a really good deal, I also look at things like, is more work with this client a potential, okay? The main goal is I'm starting the work, I'm agreeing. Yes, I can do this for you. Great. What do you expect it to be? I expect it to be this. Mm, maybe that's a little bit low. It's still worth it. I know I'm going to get other jobs from this person. I know maybe they're really well connected. I'm going to take the job then. I'm going to get everything rolling at the same time. I'm going to send you a contract and a payment link at the same time that you send me everything. I'm going to get started on this today because we're both fulfilling something then. This is the trial close. Let's just try it. Let's just try it out. We've arrived at the same place from a price standpoint. Now we're agreeing. Now let's just try it and see how we feel about it. The trial close can lead to long-term relationships because both of you are just kind of like, yeah, do you want to go on that first date? Yeah, maybe I'll see it. Hey, do you like Steven Seagal movies? Oh, I do too. <laughs> I don't even know where that came from. <laughs> My husband would laugh and be like, name one Steven Seagal movie. And you know what? I can't. So in any regard, you're trying each other out. It's them trying you out as much as as you are trying them out. But the name of the game is that we're gonna get this goal, with this goal, well, it is a goal, we're gonna get this deal closed. We're gonna get this money in the door. And we're also going to start to serve this client right now, today. So they're sending you stuff, you're sending them stuff, and you are starting to work today. You're getting paid today. That's the trial close. Solving for the pain close is a little bit different. And I talked to one of my brand new editors about this because she said, you know, I I don't want to engage with somebody or have seen somebody contract with me if they can't afford me. And I said, oh, you're absolutely right. Then we're not continuing that conversation. Once we have assessed or they've told us, hey, this is your price. Okay, I can afford it, that's great. We're still focusing on their pain. They have pain, they need you to solve that pain. You're saying, I can solve that pain. People who come to you and you're able to use the resolving for their pain clothes, they've been kind of sitting and spinning and wondering, how, how am I going to fix this? What resources do I need? Um, I don't know that I can go back to school and become a writer or copywriter or a content generator. I can't go back to school and learn how to design websites. You're solving for that pain. The difference is subtle in this close because it's not so much about starting today and getting paid today, although that definitely can happen. What it is about is that they feel heard. So I don't have a website. You know, and my clients keep asking me and I, they don't have a way to pay me and I don't have a presence and whatever. And if you're that guy, if you're that designer or if you're that girl and you can connect them to a credit card processing service so you can make them a funnel or whatever the case is, you can take away their pain, then you're pledging to do that. Okay, I can do that for you. That's great. But this is what it costs this is what you're buying, this is what it entails, this is what I'm bringing to the table, this is what I expect you to bring to the table. Great, so they agree with you. Fantastic, that sounds wonderful. I'm ready to go. You're still focusing on their pain. So you're continuing to discover, now that I know you need this, we're gonna dive in deeper into your pain. What exactly can I do for you today? How soon do you wanna get started? You're empathizing with them. I know that's frustrating. 
I'm here to help you. That's why I'm in business. From an editorial standpoint, I'm in business to help people tell their stories and to help them become empowered. And it's this incredible transformation that you see takes place. That's what I want you to bring into solving for the pain. I have this pain. I don't know how to fix it. What do I do? First, you're empathizing. And you're not empathizing to get them to do anything. You're empathizing because you're a human being and you care about them. That sucks. Oh, I hate it when I have pain like that. I hate it when I'm like, man, I need a website upgrade. But I'm not doing that. I don't hearken back to, you know, marketing and advertising in college. And I had to take website design three times. It was coding three times. Finally, my instructor was like, ah, I guess you made this digital children's book. It was about a vegetarian vampire child and, uh, and he passed me. So I understand pain. We all understand pain. We've all been there. Put yourself in that person's shoes. You can be the person to solve their pain. That's what solving the pain is about. I'm going to answer you. I'm going to empathize with you. I'm going to provide a solution for you. And then we're going to start working together. So the difference is that with the trial close, you're focusing on speed. Yes, let's get going. With the pain clothes, you're focusing on solving that and resolving the pain. You are the solution. Make sure that you don't oversell yourself as well. There's been a couple times where I have just talked too much. I have talked right into the clothes at the sale and then just kept going right out of the clothes. So you wanna make sure when they say yes, Send this to me. This is great. I need it. I am ready to get going. That you say, perfect. I need your contact information and your email information. This is what will be coming to you. And you send me what you need to send me as soon as the contract is signed and paid for. So those are two very subtle differences and two very effective closing techniques. I have used closing techniques dating back to the year was <laughs> um, 1991. And I was working at the Mall of America in the summer. Maybe it was 92, but I think it was 91. I was working at Mall of America in the summer. I worked at two stores. One was called Everything But Water. It was a bathing suit store, an accessory store. A lot of um, older gals came in getting their bathing suits and wraps and accessories for cruises and things like that. And the other store was Contempo Casual. And I don't even know if it's around anymore, but it was a contemporary contemporary store for like just younger 20-somethings. I sold stuff like velvet cat suits and giant silver hoops and whatever. And it didn't matter if I was selling on the floor it didn't matter if I'm selling digitally. It doesn't matter what I'm selling or in what capacity or in what venue I'm selling. The only thing that matters is I'm addressing that customer's needs and I'm resolving for it. We had four dancers come in for prints into Contempo Casual and they wanted those velvet cat suits. So it was like, hey, this is what they need. I'm going to provide it because I know I can provide it. There's no difference based on your product or your service. You're simply answering that client's or that prospect's needs. And make sure that you're also anticipating the questions that they might ask you. So if I've got somebody who says, hey, you know what? I'm interested in self-publishing a book. I'm like, great, that's awesome. They're gonna ask me things like, and how long does it take to go through that process? I hear that question, I don't even know how many times a week. How long does it take once you've uploaded the book before it goes live on Amazon? I have to have those answers. Am I the person who is supposed to be talking to the Kindle Direct Publishing team? Or is that something that you and your team do? What, I've already got that worked out for you. So I want you to sit down and think about just the different kind of uh, sales experiences that you can have and how you would solve for those. So if you've got a client that says, hey, you know what? I need you to help me with this and I have a question, you can answer it. 
again, you don't have to answer it right away. You can say nothing and exit the conversation and come back later if it's in the case of like a Facebook uh, direct message or a text message or something. If you're on the phone, that's a little bit trickier. There's nothing wrong with saying, you know what, I haven't really encountered that yet, but um, I'm happy to look into my resources or ask some of my other team members that question and get back to you. There's nothing wrong with saying that. It's far more preferable to say that you don't know and that you're on the hunt for the answer than it is to give the wrong answer and have that bite you in the butt later. Ask me how I know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's that hood coming out. Sorry. Anyways, we're going to move on out of these close techniques that I hope that you're finding useful. I found them super useful and they really took me from having no money in my bank account to like, I'm giving this guy a shot. He's giving me a shot and he's paying me today. And then I was able to do things like, um, I don't know, take a nap instead of worrying about money coming in the door. It's not an immediate building up. It's it's returning to this again and again and again and saying, I'm going to put myself out there. I'm going to offer myself again. I'm going to do this again. I'm going to resolve this again. That's what it entails. Our second part of this module concerns resources. And these are super duper awesome, amazing resources, majority of which I have used. And that's why I'm recommending them as you'll also hear in these modules one of the main themes is do not put your eggs in one basket. Over the course of five years, I've used multitude of passive income streams, multitudes of partial passive income streams, working with uh, people in affiliate industries or fields, working directly with customers, um, finding jobs through all kinds of different media sites and things of that nature. And that's what I want to share with you. What I'm sharing with you is what works. If you just do the work. It's a little scary sometimes to put yourself out there, but you can do this. And I totally believe in you. I'm going to talk about each of these briefly, but on the resources page, we're also going to link everything up. So you can go there. You can go to these resources. You can get set up. You can get the account set up. You can start searching. You can start making connections with people that will bring jobs into your orbit. And then you're able to make money from them. So, First, I want to talk about Creative Circle. Now, Creative Circle is kind of like a recruiting firm, but they're more of a job placement agency. So when I worked with them, and some people, you know, might hear this and go, oh, but wait, but wait, they only work with traditional kind of structured jobs. And you know what? That's not true. Because I worked with them. It doesn't mean that I got a job like that. It means that I said, you know what? I want a job, but I have to do it from home. I cannot come in in any way, shape, or form in any capacity. Can I show up on video calls? 100%. Can I show up on conference calls? 100%. Can I take part in sharing documents? Absolutely. I'm your girl, but I have to work remotely. And it took a little bit of time but they were able to come back to me with a client that I held onto for three years until they were bought out. It's a national hotel chain and it, it was amazing. It was a life changer. It tripled my income instantly. I'm practicing my snapping. Oh yeah. <laughs> Secondarily, I wanna to talk to you about a resource you have right at your hands. And if you're a member of the Sick Biz, Facebook group, you know about this resource. This is the job board. It's headed up by Galena Jenkins. Sorry, I totally screwed her name up. It's headed up by Galena Jenkins, who is our sick biz secretary. It is the largest virtual assistant job board on Facebook. To my knowledge, I believe it has 7,000, 8,000 members or something like that. Galena vets every one of these jobs she and her team do to make sure that a living wage is prevalent in these jobs. Um, these are not jobs that are, and sometimes you hear of jobs coming from overseas that they're paying like $2 an hour. That's not the kind of jobs that she's advocating for. She's actually vetting these jobs and making sure 
that you can make a living wage on them. And that is one of our mantras at SickBiz. As you know, if you're in the Facebook group, we talk about making a living wage and even making a luxury wage. Those things are very possible. The other thing that's awesome about her group is that it's not just virtual assistant positions or gigs. Um, sometimes they spill over into content creation and people don't really know how to classify what they're looking for. And so um, they just call them virtual assisting jobs. And so you can find clients that you can develop relationships with and you can have repeat jobs about 70% of my business is repeat. I cannot stress enough when you get a client to cultivate and nurture them and love the crap out of them because it will pay off for you. But mostly it just feels good. Um, third, make sure that you're involved in Facebook groups. Make sure that you're the resource in Facebook groups so people know to go to you. Hey, you're looking for an editor? Oh, hey, in this Facebook group of like 3,000 people, go to, go to her. And then you're going to have testimonials that come flooding in. Yeah, go to her. I used her. This is great. She's the one to use in this group. You're going to get lots of work that way. Um, you can also use a recruiter. A recruiter is a little bit different than what we talked about with Creative Circle because they're looking to place you in a position versus looking to place you in a gig, which may be more temporary or maybe there's just a handful of projects, for example. A recruiter can place you in an outside corporation or company. And then again, you can tell them, but you know what? I have to do this job remotely. It's possible to work remotely for another company. And you can even include that into working for yourself. There shouldn't be any conflict of interest there. I'm telling you what, if there was, I'd probably be like, well, I'll see you later then. Because I don't like anybody to limit my income potential or what I can do. Um, Craigslist is another place where you can pick up some gigs. I did that. You need to be careful of the people that you meet there. So just uh, be aware of that. Use common sense. Monster and Indeed, also other places where you can uh, pick up on positions that are completely 100% remote. I work with an editor. One of the editors on my team works with a company that flies him around internationally. His job is 100% remote besides this international travel where he winds up in like Irish coffee shops. So it is feasible. Uh, the other thing I advise is, and you've probably heard me talk about this on the podcast, make sure that you're sending emails out to people to let them know, hey, I'm on the hunt. You know, I'm, I'm ready to work. And I can't remember who said it, but it was, it was somebody in a copywriting group I was in who said, you know, 250 people. So make an email to each one of those 250 people and not some boilerplate template, you know, substitute the name of this person for that person. You are creating an email, it doesn't have to be long, but it's like, hey Chad, I haven't talked to you in a while. How you doing? How's the wife doing? And no, oh, this is weird. Acknowledge the weirdness. It's weird. I haven't talked to you in five years. It's weird. But you know what? I'm in a position now where I need help. You know that I do good work. We work together. I miss working with you. Do you know anybody? That's all you need to do. Don't be afraid to ask people. And I'm going to get more into the ask in minutes. You can also hook up with affiliate agencies. So I work with somebody who does, all she does is 100% uh, Amazon book marketing. So guess what? I have a need for that with my clients. She has a need to send people who want to write books my way. We scratch each other's backs. It's a beautiful freaking relationship, okay? Uh, referral fees, that's another thing. Whether you are sending people business or they are sending you business, you're piggybacking on each other. Direct corporate connections. If you're not working with a recruiter, you can work directly with a corporation or a company. You can apply for those remote-only positions and see how that goes. Influencers you admire. These are people that uh, there's one gal I have my eye on right now, you guys. She is a billionaire with a B. So, and her positivity is amazing. How she reaches out to people, her authenticity. She hasn't lost being grounded. So I've got my eye on her in terms of wanting to connect with her and um, just even ask, how do I join your team? Do you have a need for my services? Um, is there anything that I can do for you for a reduced cost to let you know, this is similar to a trial close, I call this the ramp close, can I do it for a reduced cost so you can see what I do and then we can revisit my fee 
after the first project. So uh, another thing is associations. I'm associated with the Editorial Freelancers Association, Association, which is where I um, get a lot of my rates or I get a lot of my definitions from. So I know that if I am editing a book, for example, I'm going to base that book on not just word count, but how many words per page. The Editorial Freelancers Association lets me know that's 250 words per page. That's the standard. They're setting the standard. Fantastic. Also, within those groups are likely job postings, people that you know, people in your same boat, and you want to work together. You both have something, you know, that you want to accomplish and you may be able to help each other in these groups. Networking. Obviously, we're going to talk a lot about networking uh, very soon and it's an entire own separate module. That's how important networking is. Um, masterminds, if you can afford a mastermind, and all of them are not um, that expensive, but if you're a part of a mastermind group, then within that group, if you talk to the admin and you're like, hey, you know what, I do this, and I'd like to incentivize your group by coming up with a special promotion, for example, of, of doing all the books or whatever, you can also develop a membership um, so people need to pay you monthly. Let's say they need to pay you to be part of a Facebook group or whatever. And so then, um, they can't even join it and they can't get the, uh, resources that you're offering and your specialties and expertise unless they pay you. And so this is something that's a retainer fee, a membership fee that's paid over and over again. So that's another way to make money. Simply asking. And it's kind of like the influencer, but it doesn't have to be an influencer. It can be anybody. Hey, I noticed you're doing this. You're doing this project or whatever. I want to be a part of the team. Do you have a need for me? Can I be a part of the team? You can ask people. The worst thing they're going to say is, ah, oh, man, no. You know what? I tell you what, you're going to think this is crazy. I just asked the agency that handles Stephen King's social media. I was like, listen, I want to be on your team and you don't even have to pay me because I'm just this rabid Stephen King fan. If you're watching this, Mr. King, I wish you would adopt me already. Okay. So ask. The worst thing that they can say is no. This guy came back and said, you know what? We don't have any openings right now, but I will consider you. And as maybe that was a polite brush off, but I... I soared a little bit. I was happy to hear that. Um, do jobs that you normally wouldn't do. The way that I landed this national hotel chain is because they said, hey, can you do some of this data analysis for Google Analytics? And that's what I had done as part of my job uh, working in this regional furniture company. So I was like, yeah, I can do it. Was it what I wanted to do? Not entirely but it didn't make up 100% of what I did. And I was happy to do it. And it was interesting. I think um, the way that people behave from an emotional standpoint is interesting and how that comes out in, in data is fascinating. So I was able to do that. And then they said, you know what? And we heard that you do copywriting. Do you wanna give this a go? And let me tell you what, all bets were off. Like I took all of everything out of the arsenal. I was like, copywriting, you want copyright? I gave it to them 110% and that was it. That was it. They engaged me for the next three years to write so much of their copy that when their website was being done, they had me come into the company and consult with them because I had been such an integral part of building their brand voice. That's what I'm talking about. You're looking at these opportunities, it's kind of like the movie, Yes Man, you're just saying yes, 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 I want to do it, so it's totally great. Also, you're focusing on building your relationships and building value. When you're doing that, it's kind of the reciprocal thing. People are going to want to take care of you. Hey, yeah, I'll take care of you. Oh, really? Well, I'll take care of you too. That happens, it's a beautiful thing. You can keep it going. Make sure it's balanced though. I learned a hard lesson. I should have been paying somebody referral fees like this whole time, even though I asked them like three times and they said no. And I thought that was the answer and I thought that was okay, but you know what it wasn't? I wasn't paying in what I should have been paying. So make sure when you enter into these agreements that 
you are paying what you are supposed to be paying, even if the other person says no multiple times, that's not okay because there is uh, an imbalance of power. You don't want that imbalance of power. So make sure that this is non-negotiable. You give me business, I give you X percent. I give you business, you give me X percent. Work on building those relationships. Some other places very quickly, Upwork, Top Tail, Freelancer, Guru, People Hour, and uh, that's a, a site I really haven't used, and so I'm not sure uh, what's entailed there, but give it a whirl to see if it works. It was listed as one of the top 10 um, best paid freelancing sites, so hopefully Entrepreneur knows what they're talking about. And freelance writing gigs, collab tree, and also look at your local colleges and businesses. If it's a situation where um, you can work partially from home, there's no shame in going to a business saying, hey, do you need a part-time worker? What do you guys do here? I just wanna find out about it. Worst case scenario, you have opened up your circle to include another network member. So. That was a lot of information coming at you. We're going to bring these tools to you in the resources page that you can find. You'll be able to clink, click rather after this video and then you can access any of these resources. I want you to try out the trial close and see if you can get money in the door that very day. That's kind of a fun thing. You've got nothing to lose there. And then I want you to practice the solving for pain clothes in addition to checking out the resources that you can find on the resources page. So that's it for module number two. Look at that, we're what, a quarter of a way through the course already. Always gotta be optimistic, right? I'm so glad you're here. I hope you're finding a lot of value in this and I will see you over on the next module. Module number three, we're talking about marketing. Woohoo!